Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Monty Python. Hello again. Welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Chapter 69 opens with a macabre nocturnal scene. The patio of the Ducal Palace is decorated with hundreds of candles and torches. In the middle is a giant catafalque covered by a canopy of black velvet. On top of the catafalque lies the dead body of a damsel who was so beautiful that her beauty made death itself seem beautiful. The dead woman's head rests on a brocade pillow, and in her crossed hands, she holds a symbol of her virginity, a golden and victorious branch of palm. It's another theatrical scene, like so many we have seen in part two. On a stage next to the catafalque are seated two kings and also the duke and duchess. Don Quixote and Sancho are seated near the steps of this stage, in other words, in a space between reality and fiction. Finally, the narrator's rhetorical question underscores the amazement, admiratio in Latin, that the scene produces and lets us know whose body this is. Who would not have been astonished by this, now compounded by the fact that Don Quixote recognized that the dead body that was on the catafalque was that of the beautiful Altisidora? Did you know the double-edged axe Acha in Spanish was the ancient symbol of the labyrinth. In Spanish, Acha was a homonym, meaning a kind of torch. The scene now transforms into an explicit parody of an inquisitional trial of Sancho. A servant dresses him like a heretic. A garment of black buckram decorated with flames of fire and taking off his cap, he put on his head a cone-shaped hat like the kind given to penitents to wear by the holy office. Note that buckram was also used to bind books. Note also that Sancho's hat, decorated with devils, means that he is an unrepentant heretic destined to be burned alive. Curiously, Don Quixote's instinct is to laugh. Even though terror had stunned his senses, he couldn't help but laugh at seeing the figure cast by Sancho. We have seen many different cases of laughter in this novel. This one seems to be among the most sadistic. Quixotic Mission When they returned to the Ducal Palace, Don Quixote and Sancho approached the dead body of whom? A. Dulcinea B. Altisidora C. Soraida. Correct answer B. Altisidora. Now, the melodious sounds of flutes, remember the albogues, emanates from beneath the catafalque. A young boy appears with a harp and sings two octaves. Note three important aspects of his poem. First, it announces that Altisidora has died because of the cruelty of Don Quixote. Second, it combines the same verse from Ariosto's Orlando Furioso that concluded Don Quixote Part 1 with an allusion to Orpheus's journey into the underworld to rescue his wife Eurydice. I will sing her beauty and her misfortune with sweeter plectrum than the minstrel from Thrace. And third, its first octave is by Cervantes, but its second is an exact transcription of the second octave of Garcilaso's third eglog. In other words, rescuing Altisidora from death is the goal of the artistic production of Orpheus and Ariosto, as well as that of Cervantes and Garcilaso. And all of this has something to do with the inquisitional trial of Sancho. The two kings reveal themselves as Minos and Radamanthus, two of the three judges of the Greek underworld. Who or where is the third, Aeacus? The judges declare that Altisidora is not yet dead and that Sancho's ceremonial martyrdom can rescue her from hell. They order Sancho to submit, comparing him to the rebellious biblical king Nimrod. Soften your heart, tiger, humble yourself, proud Nimrod, and suffer in silence. Sancho's martyrdom consists of a series of comical swipes and slaps to his face. 
as well as pinches and pinpricks to his arms and back. At first, Sancho resists, bellowing like a bull. Note the allusion to the Morisco issue. I swear to God, I'll sooner become a Moor than let them swipe at my face or slap my nose. A Freudian would add that our squire fears castration here. The devil can take me before I'll consent to being touched by duenas. A fascinating comical aspect of this ceremony appears in the prosaic description of the women who slap Sancho's face. Some six duenas in procession, one after the other, four of them wearing spectacles, all of them raising their right hands somewhat, with four fingers of wrist exposed so as to make their hands look longer, as is the current fashion. Like the buckram of Sancho's outfit, the women's glasses make the whole scene allude to the book burning episode of chapter six, part one. Their shortened sleeves, however, have me baffled. On one level, this detail links Sancho's martyrdom to Altisidora's description of hell in the next chapter. Nevertheless, there's something here about religious orthodoxy as a kind of fashion. Similarly, Sancho notes that one of the women wears an excessive amount of makeup. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating novel. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.